Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to our Growth Challenge, 30-Day Growth Challenge at here at The Way Without Reach. And my name is Sheila Tatum, and I'm one of the leaders here at The Way Without Reach. And um, we are here today to talk about the book of James. And in the, just a quick overview, um, we did hear from uh, about James chapter 4. Um, that was verses 13 to 17. And in those verses, we, we learned that we can't just say what we're going to do. If it's either God's will is what we need to say. And so we depend on the will of God in our lives and his purpose for us. And so we have to acknowledge him first and who we are and what we should do from day to day. Also, it also the key verse to me was um, to know to do right and not do it is a sin. And so we're going to dive in more in the book of James. And I'm going to be covering uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. So let's begin. Okay, so James chapter 5 says, Look here, you rich people. Weep and groan with anguish because of the terrible troubles ahead of you. Your wealth is rotting away and your fine clothes are moth-eaten rags. Your gold and silver have become worthless and the very wealth that you were counting on will eat away at your flesh like fire. The treasure you have accumulated will stand as an evidence against you and on the day of judgment for, wiz for listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay. The wages you held back cry out against you. The cries of those who harvest their fields have reached the ears of the Lord of Heaven's armies. And so James is dealing with the rich. And the title, subtitle to this particular section of James is called Warning to the Rich. But the message is not only to the rich, but it's to the poor as well. And so let's talk about that. So first he says, look, you rich people. And I looked up the word, took the liberty to look up the word rich. In our, in, our, in our Strong's Bible Dictionary, and it says abundance in material resources and wealth. So if you have an abundance, meaning that you have more than what you need and enough to give to others, then you're considered rich. And so I wanna first um, talk to those who have employees and people who work under you. As believers, we cannot mistreat people. And so as a result of the rich, um, this, this message came from, from James. He was telling the rich, you need to weep and groan with anguish because of the terrible things that are ahead of you. And so because of their choices to treat the, their employees wrong, there was a season in that, that the harvesters would come and do the work and then their wages would be held back. And so they weren't slaves, they were actually employees. And this was a season where it was the Palestines who decided to hire employees, and, but they weren't treating them right. So they would, would hoard all the riches and, and the, the, the harvest for themselves and not properly pay their people. And so it's a difference between, if there is a difference between the people working for it or if they had a totem ahead of time, look, we don't have enough to pay you, then that's a difference. But these people worked and worked hard for that money. And so they were being treated wrong. And so James was saying, terrible things are ahead. So a, a form of weeping and howling is a, is a mourning, a laminate, an external expression of grief. So weeping to me in scripturally means that you need to repent. You need to think different about what you're doing. And if you don't, trouble is coming. And so that was the warning to the rich. And then verse two says, your wealth is rotting away. The things that you held back unlawfully or unfairly from the poor or from your employees that are working for you, when you hold things back from those who should um, benefit for their hard work, then it's held, it's a record against you. And he said, it's going to rot away. And your fine clothing, because you know rich, they like to live pious and have the best of things at someone else's expense. He said, those things, the, they're going to be moth-eaten. And there's a reference verse that reminds me of this situation. And it's found in Matthew 6, 19 and 20. It says, don't store up treasure here on earth. Where moth and eat them and rust destroys them and their thieves break in and steal. Rather, store up treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. So how do we lay up treasure? We lay up treasure by treating the poor right. Because Jesus says, when you do unto the poor, you're doing unto me. And God is a great record keeper. And so that's where the true treasure is. And so when we hold back our wealth from those who work hard, there's trouble coming. Then in verse 3, it says, your gold and silver have become worthless. The very wealth you're counting on and will eat away your flesh like fire. And it makes me think about the movie called The Hoarders where people just hoard and, and hold on to everything and don't want to give away anything. 
and they die and leave it or and then the show the hoarders where they go through all this stuff and it's all rot eaten and rats are it's all deteriorating because they're not doing with with it what god has said to do with it not hoard it for yourself but to be givers and to be a be successful and that's where rich, true richness is is when you're giving to the poor and also it says in verse 3, it says the treasure you have accumulated will stand evidence against you on the day of judgment. Judgment is coming. And then in verse 4, for listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom have cheated, you cheated out of their pay. God said, I'm coming for you. God said, I hear their cries. And I want to speak to those who are considered poor or, or, or have lack. When you've not been treated right, don't cry. Don't take vengeance cry out to the Lord. That's the message to us. Like sometimes I consider myself in that category. And what should I do? Cry out to the Lord and he will hear your cry. And in this verse, he says in verse four, he says the wages you held back cry out against you. The cries of those who harvest your fields have reached the ears of the Lord. And this, and in the King James version, it says the Lord of uh, Sabaoth, not Sabbath, the Lord of vengeance, the war, uh, the Lord of war, the Lord of armies. God is a God of vengeance, and he will come after those who do not treat his people right. So who's the message to? It's to the rich. You need to weep. You need to repent. You need to change because vengeance is coming. And to the poor, cry out to the Lord. Cry out to the Lord, and he will hear your cry. Amen? And so I want to share, uh, I want to say too, to please, if you have a comment, if you can learn something from this segment of James, please make your comments down in the comment section. Please hit like if you heard something you like, and please send, hit share and share this teaching with some of your friends that are really crying out to the Lord. Now, don't send it to your bosses. Uh, don't do that. Pray for them. The Bible says pray for them that despitefully use you and bless them that curse you. So we want to trust the Lord, but we cry out to the Lord. But those who have and are not treating people right with their riches and hoarding, let's change, let's repent. And ask God to change our hearts. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for the warning. And we thank you, God, that you're a God of vengeance. And God, that will, will protect those that belong to you. We honor you and we praise you. And we thank you for a word of wisdom. Through the book of James once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.